Welcome to another session of NeverEnding Panel. In our continuing attempt to defend the indefensible... Uh, uh, uh. You have to introduce the panelists. We have to introduce the panelists? We'll you introduce the, the panelists. moderator. I right. am Aton Collin, your host and moderator. All right, this very good. Lee Jackson. Gronk I'm Aton Collin. I am the host for this particular segment called In Defense Of. To my right is Charles Lee Jackson II, a eminent, knowledgeable individual on most things science fiction and a couple of things fantasy. And to the right of him is my brother, Donnie Collin, a truly decent and wonderful human being in most ways. Oh, I hate that you did that. <laughs> I just hate that you did you just that. Killed, was, you just yeah. killed four <laughs> minutes of his Man, patter for right. tonight. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Anyways, this is a segment called In Defensive, where we find movies everybody hates, everybody finds awful and terrible, and try to find some small redeeming feature, some reason to say why it is not the absolute worst piece of crap out there, even though it still might be a pretty stinking pile of not wonderful, it's not as high as you think. Right, and tonight, Mark, in defense in color. That's good. Sorry, yeah, go ahead. Maybe better than that. Yeah. Tonight, in defense of, we'll try to defend G.I. Joe Rise of Cobra, a truly horrible movie that wasn't quite as horrible as everyone seems to think. I will start off by saying, yes, it had a lot of problems. If the bad guy could make the wonder weapons of doom, and he's about to take over the president of the United States, why does he need to steal his own weapons? He owns the factories. I mean, all right, there are some plot holes so there. So that he could have an evil laugh. So he can have an evil laugh. Obviously, there are some plot holes there, some things that you can drive a truck through. But it was based on a cartoon. I remember watching G.I. Joe. I remember seeing it. And let's face it, it was not the most intellectually stimulating hey. thing in the world. Things blew up. Hey, Tom. Bad guys were bad. Dark Knight was based on a cartoon. Look how friggin' brilliant that was i'm saying oh yeah you could make it great I'm iron man was pretty cool Night i enjoyed day, that baby. but i'm not saying it was a phenomenal movie i'm not saying it was up there but, but you're i'm saying defending it saying it was based on a cartoon so lighten up and i'm saying there are other great there are other things out there that were based well, on cartoons that were amazing technically the republican party was based on a cartoon by thomas nast <laughs> technically no politics wait. no politics on neverendingpanel.com the views of this panelist are not necessarily representative of that of the loss of... So, yeah, I think go ahead. No, he's right. The Republicans are kind of clowning. Anyways. Yeah. Um, no, technically it was based on a comic book, not a cartoon. In comic books, you can actually have a lot more fun with. Um, so based upon that, I'll simply say, if you watch the original cartoons that G.I. Joe was made out of, it wasn't particularly wonderful. It had really black and white bad guys, good guys. Uh, it had really basic concepts, and the, all the villains were like, Hey, I'm going to destroy you. <laughs> and, you know, I will come in and save you. <laughs> and that's pretty much all it was. Fly the American flag, be happy, go out there, save the bad guys, who have these wonderful plots from, you know, blowing up the moon or changing the face of the moon or capturing all the cheese in France. I don't care what it was. It was silly. I liked it. It was fun. It had a silly little moral at the end. And if you look at the movie, it essentially captured that. No thought was needed for that movie. The bad guys were just bad because they wanted to be. They blew things up because they wanted to blow them up. And they blew up really big things. Let's face it, when they took down the Eiffel Tower, that was kind of cool. And then the bad guys were kind of defeated at the end. And there you go. Okay, let me ask you a question. You're defending it because it was based on a TV show that was um, banal and you know had, had was black and white and had poor scripting. It was and I, I'm, I'm just saying that... When you bring something into the theater experience where you're spending 10, 11, 12 bucks on a movie, I don't want what it was based on if, if what it was based on was crap. You know, you, and you can't make me uh, appreciate the movie with great special effects if you have crappy dialogue. I don't care if it was based on a show that had crappy dialogue. You need to bring a little bit more to the to the to the theater. And if you want, and they didn't, as far as I'm concerned, it was it was horrible. The acting was horrible. The plot holes were horrible. There was nothing. Nothing compelling about it except maybe the hot chick and the, you know, the, the spandex, whatever she was in. There were actually two hot chicks. There were two hot chicks? Uh, were, yeah. I, I what about, like were there so, any uh, cute you know, guys? I can defend it on that and that it had sound, but that's about it. So, I mean, unless, you know, you like, you, I remember you telling me, Charles, you said, oh, wait, 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 see it all the way to the ending and then come and argue with me. Mm -hmm. So I'm waiting for you, man, to like, you know, spew, baby. Yeah. Let me, let me point out, first of all, Anyways, that what it was, I was based is, on okay. a based on a cartoon series, based on a line of toys, right. based on a single toy. Right. Um, the thing about G.I. Joe, The Rise of Cobra is that given what they were doing, they, they didn't need to have any plot development. They didn't need to have any characterization. And All they, they needed to have was stuff run, people running around, stuff blowing up, because that was what the pe people that were going to pay the money were coming to see. The fact is that it did have some of each of those things. It does actually have a plot that moves along. And mm. if you see it to the Plots. end, you realize that 
Spoiler alert. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm afraid. Uh, yeah. You realize that it actually sets up the entire cartoon series. It is the pilot. It, it is the backstory for the entire oh, cartoon series. Crap, they're going to make more? I, don't I mean, know if, cool. I, right, I don't know if they're going to make any more or not, but they set up the characters in such a way that at the end of the movie, the characters that we've been watching that don't seem to quite fit with our memories of them from the show turn into those characters. A guy says, you know, don't call me by my name anymore. Call me Commander, and is now wearing, uh, you know, a Cobra face mask. And the guy who was kind of regular has now been, been full of uh, metal, so he now has a metal face. Call me Destro. We have a and gentleman it's... in the back who has a question. No, I'm pointing to her face. Nope, you raise your hand. You got an honest question. Yeah. That's the rule. But the thing is that <laughs> when a movie doesn't have to have anything except stuff blown up and it has something beyond that, right there is a reason to give it a little slack. Um, I don't think it's the best movie ever made. and Indeed, it has a lot of plot holes. No. But it, if you were trying to get the audience from the cartoon series to like a movie... Uh, if they stayed to the end, they probably liked the movie because it did fit in with its origins. A lot of these movie, big big budget movies based on TV shows, uh, you come out thinking, God, that was horrible. Did anybody ever see the show that it was based on? Um, well, I, I, I prefer it to not be a blockbuster, but to fit in with its with uh, its origins. Charles, I think it slipped. Statement, I think it slipped through the crack because I think that you're correct. It's based on a product that became a cartoon that ultimately became a movie or many products so that they could make some you know lots of different uh, you know toys to make some more money mm -hmm. um, so I think that there wasn't a lot of equity and you know we had the, we had an indefensive speed racer where people were married to the show and then they had a direct comparison to the movie right. and there was more passion about that argument but I think you're right in that you know, people remember the cartoon. I remember playing with the G.I. Joes in the cartoon. I was already too old by the time that came along, so I didn't, I didn't have any connection to it. Yeah. So I think I was looking for something different, and I think they managed to just create something that appealed to no one um, and just had... It, it felt like it was trying to be campy and not we campy. We have a... New guy. What's your name? Doug. 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 Yeah, I just uh, am pointing out that a G.I. Joe is... Uh, Essentially, a doll for boys, but called action figure. We call it male action figure. We don't say doll. Well, we have one minute, so. Milt. Milt. Well, as I understand it, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles came from a toy, although actually that ended up pretty good. That's exactly well, right. Thank you, Milt. Thank you, Milt. What he said. And a and, uh, guy whose name yes. we don't know. And also, but you've I, forgotten that they you know. did 30 years of comic books uh, in addition to the cartoon show based on the toy. And from what I saw, the movie was more closely based on the comic book version than on the cartoon version. Hmm. Okay, so in conclusion, I think what I will say is G.I. Joe Rise of Koba. Crap, but what did you expect? Get over it. It did what it was supposed to do. Move on. Charles? Uh, and I will say, if you liked the TV series... Um, See the whole movie. I think I think you will enjoy the movie. I don't think you will put it on your top ten list. It isn't even on my top 150 list. But I enjoyed it. Donnie. Well, in real estate, they have location, location, location. For this movie, I have crap, crap, and crap. Thank you for joining us at Neverending Panel, and we're out.